When it comes to my technical skills, I'm an average developer. Like if there was a if there was a normal distribution bell curve, I'd be parked right at the top of that thing, right? I'm not great, nothing special, but I'm not bad either. Just average. However, I think I'm a really good developer overall. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video because I want to maybe dispel some misconceptions that are out there. Before we dive into that, I got to thank today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence or your developer portfolio. So go ahead and check them out, squarespace.com slash Sean Allen. So like I said, my technical skills, they're fine, right? Nothing special, not bad, just, just average. However, I think there's a misconception out there, I don't know, probably because I create content and put out a lot of stuff that I just know so much. And again, this is the misconception that I want, I want to dispel, right? Because I get DMs, emails, you know, comments on YouTube asking like very specific questions about all kinds of frameworks. And then as you know, like there's a whole ocean of knowledge that you can have. Like it's impossible to know everything about everything. And again, this is the misconception that I want to hopefully dispel in this video. The more experience I gain, the more I realize that like, I don't know much. And there's a difference between knowing something, like having it memorized versus being able to figure things out quickly and being a quick learner. And again, this is the misconception that I want to dispel because I know a lot of you out there are probably just learning software development or just learning Swift or you're earlier in your career and you're probably very self-conscious about your, your knowledge, right? You probably look at these developers on Twitter or content creators and you think to yourself like, wow, I don't, I don't know nearly as much as they do. And, and you're self-conscious about your knowledge. Well, again, I want to say that like, you don't have to know much, but there's a couple keys. Even if your knowledge is mediocre or less, there's some things you can do as a developer to make yourself really, really good. And I alluded to one of those just a little bit ago, and that is your ability to learn. Like I said, I don't know much off the top of my head, like AR kit, for example, I don't know anything about that. However, I'm confident if I were to get tasked with building an AR app, like I would dive into the documentation, I would read books. Like I'm very confident that I would be able to pick up that knowledge and skill set relatively quickly. And I think that's the big thing is learning how to learn whether you learn by reading books or watching videos or diving into documentation or listening to podcasts, like figure out how you learn because the ability to pick up new skills and new knowledge relatively quickly is a huge part of being a developer. You don't have to have every framework out there memorized. And besides learning how to pick things up quickly, there's a whole slew of soft skills that I believe are at least half of the equation, right? There's your technical skills and then your soft skills. And that's where even though I say my technical skills are average, I believe my soft skills are way, way, way above average. And that's what I think makes me a good developer overall, even though my technical skills, like I said, are just, they're fine, they're average. And those are skills that you can work on, right? Like your communication skills, like having the ability to break down complex technical topics, not only to maybe more junior developers or other technical people, but other non-technical people uh, at your company or on your team. For example, I spend a lot of time in small startups, so I'm constantly having to communicate to, you know, the CEO, you know, the trade-offs uh, between how complex we want to make this feature, right? Because what happens with, you know, marketing and product people uh, or, or co-founders, like they want to add features, add features, add features. Well, it's up to you as a developer to properly communicate like, hey, that's fine. We can add this feature, but, you know, we're either going to have to get rid of another feature or make some trade-offs because we have a launch date that we got to hit. And if we keep adding features, like we're going to miss that launch date. And properly communicating that and having those discussions is an insanely valuable skill for a developer. And of course, the number one thing you can control is your work ethic, right? You can just be a hard worker. Back to that ability to pick things up quickly, you know, diving into books, learning new things like that work ethic and that drive. Like you can control that. You can you can improve on that. And then other soft skills, like the, the passion you have for your job and your craft. Also being a good teammate, like it doesn't matter how great of a developer you are. If you're a horrible teammate and you're a horrible person, you're, you're bad to work with, like you're, you're gonna be a net negative on your overall team, no matter how good your skills are. Another soft skill you can work on is showing initiative, like, right? Like don't always wait and sit back and be told what to do. Now I'm not saying go rogue, but if you're a junior developer, like go to your senior developers or go to your team and say, hey, I had this idea, I wanna research it, I wanna look into building this, what do you think? You know, and showing the initiative uh, will go a long way towards making yourself a more well-rounded developer if you feel like you're lacking in your technical knowledge. And then of course you can start researching uh, UI, UX, design, overall product stuff. Again, cause this is 
right? We're, we're talking about making up for a lack of technical knowledge. Well, again, there's a lot more that goes into being a developer than just knowing the code, right? Understanding, like I said, the UI, UX, the product, design, like start studying that, start getting very, very good at that. Because again, that makes you more well-rounded. And then lastly, when it comes to getting that job or, or getting the next job or winning that contract, like the ability to market yourself is such a big deal. And having a great online presence and developer portfolio really goes a long way with that. And that brings us back to today's sponsor, Squarespace. And like I said before, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to get that developer portfolio up and running very quickly, right? Unless you're already a front-end web developer, like for example, I'm an iOS developer, most of my audience are iOS developers, right? There's an opportunity cost to learning front-end web development to get your own website up and running, right? That time could be better spent elsewhere if you're like me, like an iOS developer. So that's where Squarespace can come in, help you out, get that portfolio up and running right away. And it's got all kinds of benefits like SEO, SEO, analytics, all that stuff. So head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So again, I consider myself an average developer when it comes to just straight up technical skills. And if you feel that way too, or you feel self-conscious about your technical skills, of course you can still work to improve them. I'm not saying you have to know nothing and not work at that, but there's many other things you can do, like the soft skills we talked about and, and learning how to learn, learn how to pick up things very, very quickly. Uh, to kind of make yourself a more well-rounded developer.